In today's episode, we're going to take a look at this 4 to 20 by 50 millimeter mil radiant version of this rifle scope and see if it lives up to Athlon's reputation for offering excellent optics at an affordable price. Alright, we have the Athlon Helos BTR Gen 2. Let's open this up and see what comes with the scope. We have an Allen wrench with set screws, worm screws. I got microfiber cleaning cloth. We have the manual and a promo. Oh, this is for the Shooting Sports Give Back program uh, that I profiled in another video at SHOT Show. Let's take a look at the scope itself. Oh, nice. Let's take a look at these turrets here. And this is one uh, sort of a pet peeve a lot of folks have. Um, certainly I did. Um, my uh, Argos did not have a turret that lined up. This one does, so that's, that's definitely a plus. And yep, they're locking turrets, so that's nice. Hear that. Nicely positive. Just a hint. I wouldn't even call that slot, but just there's a little bit of, of a rotation there, but I don't feel it biting into anything and just really really nice. Athlon is kind of famous for having really, really positive turrets, really um, audible and tactile. Let's look at those windage. And the windage has um, markings for left and right off of zero. So again, very positive. Let's take a look at some of its specs. It has a 3.6 inch eye relief, which is a comfortable distance if you're shooting a high power rifle. Or if you shoot air guns, the parallax can focus down to 10 yards. Next to it, the illuminator controls. They do make a 6 to 24 power version, but the 4 to 20 is lighter, cheaper, and when I'm shooting a 100 yard match, I seldom go higher than 12 power when I'm shooting for score. And at lower power, you get a brighter, cleaner, wider image with a much more forgiving eye box. Okay, let's take a look at these turrets. Uh, once you have your zero set up uh, with your rifle uh, and have that reticle set up, you can reset your turrets to zero by unscrewing the top of your turret cap and then just aligning that zero up to your reference mark and just tightening down there, you're good to go. But while we have this off, let's take a look at the zero stop here. Now. This has a gear, a brass gear at the top, which is your zero stop, and you can unscrew. There's uh, five set screws on here right now, and it's in, set in the up position, so that it doesn't have a zero stop engaged. And it comes with a set of extra um, set screws, so I don't, I don't know. I guess those are just backups, because it does come with a set of five. Just loosen those up. It comes with uh, that uh, Allen wrench that came in the box. You just loosen those up to loosen up this ring with this one single gear on it and there you go you're able to get this zero stop and that gear engages this one tooth at the butt at the base of uh, your turret here and locks in and that stops the turret from turning so what you want to do is once you have this your, your cap set at zero you want to loosen up that zero stop ring and set it so that stops on that tooth and then just tighten down these set screws and it says you only need to put in three but whatever I'm gonna tighten down all five okay then we set our, our zero again Make sure that's lined up Make sure that's nice and snug it's not locked in. There you go, yeah. It stops on a zero. There you go. So there's your zero stop engaged if you need it. If you like zero stop. And while we're here, let's check out our parallax focus knob. Very smooth. I'm going to say this is really well put together. And our focus, I mean our magnification wheel also very smooth and our fast focus our diopter also butter smooth nice all right so mechanics aside let's take it out and see what 
we can see through the glass. We're looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, 1,300 yards down range, and uh, we're looking at it through the scope at four power, which is its lowest power setting, which gives us the best sense of the scope's overall clarity, sharpness, contrast, and saturation at this uh, lowest power setting. And as we move up to higher magnifications, we're just magnifying any inherent flaws in the glass. So we're gonna do just that, and we're gonna bring it up to 20 power. Okay, well this is a 20 power, and this particular model, is. Uh, there's also a six to 24 model, but at 20 power, this is what we're seeing. Um, in the center, we're looking at a trail marker sign, about 30, 36 inches, and that's a good proxy for a steel target at this distance. Okay, we're looking through the scope at 20 power, and I'm gonna turn the illumination on one, off two, off three, I can already start seeing it, off four, off five, off six. So this is its brightest illumination setting and I'm going to pull out to its lowest magnification setting of four and that is what its highest illumination looks like at four power. Next, let's take it out to the range. I've got some reference targets set up and we're gonna walk back to the 100 yard benches. While we do that, I'd just like to ask you to please hit that like and subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already. Subscribing is free and if you hear me right now, you're obviously still watching this video, so probably you'll like it. And you might like my other channel, Moondog R&D, where I review gadgets and other geeky stuff. You'll find a link here or in the video description. All right, we're looking through the Athlon Helos at four power, and we're gonna take a look at the range of adjustments for windage and elevation, starting with elevation here. And I'll just pull up the turret. And that's as far down as it'll go. And we're seeing that just the edge of the camera mount, so you won't be seeing that on your actual view through the scope. All right, and a look at the windage. That's as far as it'll go on the right, and as far as it'll go on the left. All right, let's zoom this up to its maximum of 20 power and take a look at our reference targets over here. Let's start with a resolution test. And I took a still image of the high-res video. I can't really see any chromatic aberration. It is remarkably bright and sharp all the way from the center to the edge. I could easily see the 22 holes on the reactive sticker on the left reference target, a 22 hole below that sticker, and faintly barely see a 22 hole at the lower edge of the paper. On the US Air Force's optical resolution chart on the right, I could make out both vertical and horizontal lines down to element 3 in group negative 1, which is really good in its price tier. All right, we're going to do a box test. We're going to do a full rotation on elevation. Full rotation on windage. And then full rotation back. And then full rotation back. And we're right on. Okay, so it passed the box test. Now we're going to do our famous nipple twister test coined by my buddy Cyclops Joe. And we're just going to go randomly on the turrets. And we're going to see if it returns to zero. If I dial our original string point, if I dial this back to zero. And it did. Okay. All right, we passed our our nipple twister test. Let's see if this thing will track. That is at 11. And let's see if this will go to 11. 
Yes, and we are at 11 clicks, so that got us to our box. And let's see if we go back, if we go 11 in the other direction. Back to zero. Back to zero. All right, it tracks. So I'd like to thank Athlon for sending out this Helos BTR Gen 2 for me to test and evaluate. I really like my Argos, but this is a definite step up. Much nicer turrets, a finer reticle. And if you're interested in picking one up or finding out more about the scope, check out my blog, MoondogIndustries.com, for details. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.